Welcome to the Run for God Run Club, where you will find God in a runner's space. Welcome to the Run for God Run Club. This is your one stop each week to be motivated and inspired to get off the couch and onto the running trail where you can, in turn, inspire others to do the same. Let's learn, laugh, and leap into running together, giving God the glory for what we are able to do in His name. Amen. I am your running host, Dean Thompson. Can it possibly be time for the best part of the week? Well, why, yes, it can. It is time to talk running in faith for the 81st time since we started this crazy thing. And back in his seat is Run for God founder, Mitchell Hollis. Thanks for having me, Dean. How are you? Good. It's been a couple of weeks. I know. We've had a couple of guests. Had Holly on here a couple of weeks ago, right? Yeah. She did a she did a great job. I was uh I, I shouldn't say I was surprised, but you know, she doesn't talk a lot. So No, she doesn't, but it she did a really a, good it job. It was fun to listen to her, yeah. So yeah. how have you been? For sure. Good. Yeah. Good. Just crazy busy. Yeah. Busy's it's, good, it's, right? It's a busy time. You know, I, I had a chance to talk to uh, our youth group at church last night. Youth are the hardest people to talk to. Yes, I, I, you know, I've told you, I've told the story on here before about a kid that just kind of threw me completely off one time when he was looking at me like he wanted to kill me or something, and he was in the crowd. And I just last night was the same thing. You look out at the crowd and you wonder what are these kids thinking, because they have these looks on their face like they're a million miles away. They're looking and paying attention, and they seem to be engaged, but the looks on some of their faces just completely wig me out so i think next time i'm going to have if i if i talk to the youth i'm going to have them take the house lights down where i can't see them (laughs) because i was completely distracted and i get that you know i have the college ladies and we before every race we do some kind of a motivational thing and it's something out of the bible and stuff and so i'll i'll wonder am i getting through because they've got these blank looks on their face or some of them look like they're not even paying attention and then the next day we'll have the race and then after the race, you know, I'll ask him, well, how did it go? What, what, how, you know, what was your thought process and that kind of thing? You know, and, so, and somebody will say, well, all I thought was get out of the boat. Yeah. Get out of the boat. You know. It, what you talked about. The exactly what yeah. I was talking about. Yeah, that's just their. Yeah, they get it. They they hear you. I just think, man, sometimes they give you the funniest looks yeah. like uh, like they think you're they think you're crazy. But um, well, before we get started, let's talk about today's sponsor. Right. You know, we've got sponsors um, mm-hmm. and, and this week we're going to talk about one. But if if. If you have a business out there and you would like to support Run for God, you know we can't we simply can't do what we do without their help. And if you would like to support Run for God, uh simply send an email to runlanehollis at gmail dot com. He'll get you all the information on, on how to do just that. But this week's sponsor is one of our favorites. It's uh front runner athletics. Mm. As followers, we're told to put on the whole armor of God. As a runner, you also have gear you need to put on to protect yourself from injuries and aches and pains. We all have those. <laughs> front runner athletics is family owned, a family owned running specialty store that helps you. Uh, find quality gear that'll help you run and not grow weary. They're also a longtime supporter of Run for God. They've really been with us since the beginning. Yep. Uh, visit Front Runner locally in Chattanooga on Hickson Pike, Chattanooga, Tennessee on Hickson Pike, for a complimentary fitting or online at FrontRunnerAthletics.com. Mention Run for God and you'll get a ten percent discount. Yeah. So thanks to Chad and, and all the team up there at Front Runner. Good, good folks over there for sure. Facebook post from this past week. This is from K. Motika Thompson Brandt. I'm not sure I'm exactly. Proud you got that word. Yeah, that's my a goodness. Tough last name there. That is. That is. It's spelled spelled Motika. interestingly, isn't it? A couple of weeks ago, I nearly gave up. I was tired from my husband's knee replacement surgery, my grandson's horrible car accident, and heading up my 45th class reunion. Fast forward. On Friday, September 17th, I felt I needed a good run and time to cry. God and I talked. He told me, one day at a time, you can do this. I ran five miles after not running for 10 days. It was during this run that I knew I'd run the half marathon on September 25th. That very afternoon, my grandson took a turn for the better. The first good news we had received since he was life flighted four days earlier. I recruited a friend to help me with the reunion directory, and I ran the half on Saturday. I ran through rain the first hour and wind the majority of the race, but I did it. 
God provided to me that in our dark or proved to me that in our darkest hours, just give it all to him. I was carrying the weight. Once I said, God, this is too much for me. I trust that everything will be okay. The rain and wind reminded me of my recent difficult days. I knew God would get me to the finish line. My grandson living is nothing short of a miracle. He has a long road of rehab ahead, but he's been given a second chance. Praise God. Thank you, Run for God, Run Club. And that's well said, Kay. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, I mean, that just goes to show that we all have those days. We all have those seasons of life, um, but that's just another reminder that Sometimes we just got to turn it over to God. That's All right. the time, we need to turn it over to God. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's a that's a great sentiment there. <laughs> We've all been in those circumstances before, right? Where we just feel like the world is dogpiling us. <laughs> you know, like we did when we were kids. You know, sure. be like dogpile, and everybody just 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 jumps <laughs> on you. That's kind of what it feels like sometimes. Yeah. It's like from and there's a you know there's a knee in your ribs, and there's <laughs> it's just uh, every, nothing goes right. It's it's golly, but then. Um, God just shows up, mm -hmm. you know, and it happens all the time. And normally he does it at a time when you finally just let go. You know, you just get past that point of, I just can't handle it anymore, God. You know, I just, I just need some help. And boom, there it is. It happens so often. He's, he's always right there. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's always at the end of our self where we find God. And uh, yeah, great story. Yeah. And what I like about this one is in this case, She's finding time, finding time for half marathon that she doesn't have time for. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people use that excuse that I don't have time and I'm overwhelmed with the things going on. But um, she figured it out. She figured out how to find the time for it. And it's always worth it. You know, I had one of those yeah. days yesterday. You, you you were there when I came up from from my workout, and you know that yesterday was one of those days where I just felt like I just didn't have time. But I, I forced myself to get out there, and it's just. It's just always a reminder that you feel better when you do it. You know, make time for the things that are important to you and you'll feel better because of it. Make time to get in the Word. Make time to get in your workout because those are the things that, that make you feel better and give you more energy and, and, and give you more time in your day yeah. to feel energetic and do the things you need to do. And um, sometimes you just got to force yourself to do it. Yeah, a lot of times you find you've got more energy than you thought. Yesterday I ran, I ran six miles yesterday morning mm -hmm. with a, college girls and then i ran six miles in the afternoon with the high school boys mm -hmm. and i thought i don't know how well this is gonna go this afternoon yeah <laughs> and then by the time we got through me and Patton are arguing over who was pushing the pace <laughs> over the last last half which you know it was Patton. Right. it wasn't me but he <laughs> swears it was me but uh but but i felt pretty good yeah and so a lot of times god even at those times when you just feel or you just feel lousy you feel shagged out and beat up and God will just give you that little bit of shot of energy that you didn't expect. Absolutely. Trivia question from last week. Um, and I, and I, I wrote this, this question down wrong, and I, I think I voiced it the way I wrote it, which is wrong. It says 1988, it should say 1984, marked the first year the Olympics would have a women's marathon. We all know that Joan Benoit Samuelson, or Joni, won that race. But that race had another powerful story about a woman who finished 37th. Who was she and what happened? This was a uh, uh, such a, a power. I mean, we, we, you see the pictures today and you, you remember it. Um, this was the first year for the women's marathon. Prior to that, people thought women couldn't run that far. Mm -hmm. And so here, here we are. We're, we're, this great experiment of we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna put women out there. We're going to see what happens. And lo and behold, Gabriella Anderson from Switzerland. Um, you got to remember, this race was run in Los Angeles. It was August the 5th. Mm. August the 5th, Los Angeles. <laughs> uh, what does that mean? It means it's hot, yeah. right? And it was almost 90 degrees by the end of the, by the, end of the race. It was, it was really, really hot, um, even though they started early. We had the two biggest names in marathoning at the time, Joan Benoit and Greta Weitz, were, were in the race. Uh, Greta wound up dropping out. Joan wound up winning it. But Gabriella says that everything went according to plan in that first half. She wasn't going to win the race. She knew she couldn't win. But she thought if she could finish in the 10th to 15th place area, she would feel good about it. And that's where she was. 
And uh, Joni was busy up front just nailing everybody. It's still unbelievable that she ran as well as she did that day. Um, so at about 20 miles, she started to feel the heat, and then she missed the last water station. And a lot of times, these athletes, their, their, their nutrition plan is down to just the bare minimum, mm-hmm. what, exactly what they need to get to the finish line. She misses that last water station. There are only four or five water stations on the course. Nowadays, we have one every two miles. Sure. Back then, they didn't have them so, so often. She, gave, she came into the, into the stadium, and apparently what happened was she was okay outside. She had slowed down, but she, she was still okay. She came through that tunnel into the stadium, and that stadium, the tunnel was cool and shaded and something about that tunnel apparently hit her really really hard when she came out the other side and it was all sunny and all the you know with in the stadium where there was not not as much air movement and all of a sudden she just she couldn't run she just she had to start walking and if you've ever seen the video the walk was really an awkward walk um and, and she just she's the way she put it was i had to slow down because my muscles wouldn't obey me mm-hmm. <laughs> And uh, kind of those death wobbles. You, yeah, you, yeah. I've she seen, start, you've seen it in others, but like triathlon, I've, yeah. I've seen that. They, mm-hmm. you, your body starts to seize up on you. Yeah. But she was determined to finish. Um, she was 39 years old at the time, so she realized, I probably won't get another chance to run another Olympic marathon. And so I, I, I have to finish this. And she was determined. And she, she knew that the crowd was cheering loudly. The, the officials were asking her, do you know what you're doing? Do you know where you're going? She knew. She was lucid. She knew. She, her mm-hmm. body just wouldn't work. Sure. And so the, there was a doctor, and you, you've seen it in some of the pictures maybe, where there was a doctor kind of watching her and walking with her as she was going around the track, just keeping an eye on her because if things got bad. Because there was a lot of criticism back then that if, if she was in that bad of shape, why don't they make her stop? Right. And, so, the, uh, so the last – little bit was on the track the last little bit was i think it was like a lap a little over a lap was okay. on the on the track so you okay. came in you went around the track and then finished and um yeah she crossed the finish line and they immediately you know picked her up i mean she just collapsed after she that's got to be line. even worse I, I was actually i assume that was at the coliseum it was yeah that's like in a that's like in a hole yeah and so i'm sure there was no wind right if it was 90 degrees it's like a bowl of just yeah. heat yeah yeah that yeah. would be yeah, and you know, she she talks about it, and this is where a lot of people just people think that when when somebody does this, they think, oh my gosh, it must have taken her weeks to recover. She says two hours later she was fine, mm-hmm. um, and that's very often the case. You get some fluids in you, and you you know you recover relatively quickly. I've been through this myself. I got through at the Boston Marathon one time, and I couldn't stand up. I remember that every time I tried to stand up, I would feel like I was going to pass out, and I had to get back down. Yeah, and it's because the my body, I, my, there was so little blood because of being, of being dehydrated, it wouldn't pump enough blood. Is that the one from brain. just not too many years yeah, ago? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I was watching you come through. Your, the whole back part of your race was wasn't very good, was it? It was awful. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, I've seen the the video that stands out to me was, and I can't remember the two ladies' names. Um. I know who you're talking Man. about, Iron Man. Yeah, uh, it was the two ladies, number one and number two. Yeah, they were they were fighting it out for the win, and they literally got a hundred yards from the finish line. <laughs> I mean, it's funny to watch now that we know they're okay, but it was. I mean, they both hit their knees. Yeah, they start crawling, and actually, the lady that wound up winning rolled across the finish line. Yeah. And people actually do that now. If you watch the Ironman World Finals, you'll see some people get down and they'll roll across, and it's to commemorate, and I can't remember her name. But, yeah, their bodies completely just, they could not, they would try to stand and they would just fall back down. And, yeah. man, that's just, it, it kind of gives you cold chills to watch it because that is such a picture of just yeah. human fortitude uh, yeah, to we, finish. And I, I've never seen this video. I'll have to go back and watch this. But, yeah, that's... um. So what were their times? Kind of put that in perspective. Do you know? She ran, uh, she still ran a fairly fast time in this. It was, uh, I want to say it was under 240. Wow. Which back then was pretty, yeah. especially for, for women, was yeah. pretty fast. Uh, Joni ran like 224, 225. Really? In the heat. <laughs> Way back wow. then. Yeah. She was a beast when she was, and she was all. I love Jody because she was. She's always smiling. She's got that. She had that long Dorothy Hamill type hair. You know, she just, she just looked like this, just the sweetest. Like, and she's only like five two, so she's shorter than everybody else there. 
She just looked like the sweetest person in the world. And then the gun would go off. <laughs> She would just dig your eyes out to beat you. <laughs> it's all, all good stuff. But, you know, it was interesting in this case because this was, again, the first women's Olympic marathon. And so the thoughts were that women couldn't do this. And now the question was, after watching that, because it was horrific to watch, mm-hmm. were the Olympic officials going to say, hey, okay, we tried the women's marathon. We're not going to do it now yeah. because of this this terrible thing that happened. Um, but to, to their credit, they took that as a one-off and, and to this day, it's the, sure. probably the worst incident in an Olympic marathon. Uh, and so it's, it, it wasn't so bad. I'm glad they continued to, to let them run for sure. But it was, uh, it's interesting. Yeah. You can go back and you can watch the, there's yeah, a video, yeah, there's about a 10 minute that. long video of the Gabriella yeah. kind of being interviewed later in life. And it's, uh, it's, it's fun to watch and interesting to listen to her talk about it. All right. Well, let's um, let's talk about this challenge. We got one coming. We have coming. It's mm-hmm. been a couple of weeks since I've got to talk about it. Mm-hmm. Um, the coaching, the marathon challenge, challenge. We've got a lot of people already signed up mm-hmm. to start coaching this in January. So, what is it? If you if you've been living under a rock and you haven't been listening <laughs> to this podcast, we are seeking coaches to coach the Marathon Challenge in their community starting this January. Now, we've made it easy for everybody, right? That's right. All you've got to do is pretty much facilitate it if that's what you want to do. You can still go through the curriculum and teach the curriculum just like you always have if you're a Run for God coach. Or you can pull up the videos that we're going to be putting out every week and you could show that to your class and your church and your school and your community, wherever you're going to do it. And you can simply follow along with us starting in January. So what do you need to do right now? You know, a couple weeks, a few weeks ago, we put the challenge out there and we said, take action now. Number one, you need to join Run Club. If you're not a member of Run Club, this all is going to take take place behind the login of Run Club. Um, so you and your students will need to be a member of Run Club. You can go there right now and click on the coaching tab on the Couch to Marathon uh, tab and you can learn everything you need to know about coaching this we've got all the details on there you can buy the coaching kit if you if you want to do that the 5k challenge or you don't have to have that you know we mm-hmm. we pretty much do everything for you uh you're going to add your class to the website you're going to stick a flag literally on a map of where you live that way people can come on and see where all the classes are and they can reach out to you and say hey i want to be a part of your class can you take this class alone by yourself absolutely that's pretty much what everybody's doing this year but we we're kind of marrying the two things that make run for god so incredible the training number one um all the the instruction you get everything like that but we're also bringing in the communities because that that's that's been the secret of run for god for the past 11 years is the Amen. accountability, the community. We have that in Run Club. It's online. It's it's so cool to, to go to Run at the Mill or um, our 5K in this past April. And it's like everybody knew each other already yeah. because of that community. But we're bringing in the physical communities too. So we're, we're trying to link hands with all of these different coaching communities um, around the world, really. we've To this date, we've had about 6,500 coaches around the world. And we would love to get as many of those as we can. We're trying to get 10,000 people to start this challenge with us this January, students. Um, so do you have to do you have to be a marathoner to teach this thing? No. No, absolutely not. We've had so many people who have coached the 5K challenge while they're taking the 5K challenge. Now, we're going to go for one year. It's going to be the Couch to Marathon, but we're starting with the 5K challenge. The 5K challenge starting in January is no different than it's ever been. So, you know, you have to be careful of saying, well, I can't run a marathon. Well, neither could I the very first time I started training. Right. You, we're, we're taking this in steps. There's four steps. There's the 5K, which is 12 weeks. There's the 10K, which is 12 weeks. The half marathon, which is 12 weeks. And the marathon, which is 12 weeks. And we're even taking two weeks in between those. I hate to invoke mysticism, but the, the, the old Chinese proverb says the journey of, of 10,000 miles starts with, with the first step, right? Exactly. The 5K is the first step. You can make it that 10,000 steps if you will just take the first one. Right. We, we know 
that the 5K challenge works. That's right. We know that the 10K challenge works. That's we right. know that the half and we know that the marathon challenge works. You have to give it time. Yeah. This is this is a full year, and we've given plenty of time for rest, uh, for unstructured weeks. We even have some unstructured weeks this next year, but it's going to be incredible. So what are we asking you as a coach or a potential coach? Maybe God's landed on your heart right now that you need to do this. Well, let me give you a piece of advice. Do it. Do it. <laughs> if you feel that God's prompting you to do this, pray about it and do it. So go to, go to runforgod.com. Log in and click on the coaching tab, and you'll find out all the information you need. You can reach out to us if you've got any questions. We'll be happy to to kind of walk you through it. But we want to have ten thousand people starting this January, and we we want you to be part of it for sure. You know, I've got this thing that uh, I I wanted to purchase something. the The item I wanted to purchase was like seventy two dollars, right? And I just I didn't, I didn't pull the trigger and I didn't buy what I, what I wanted to buy. And then the next thing I knew it was $106. Well, I'm not buying it at $106. I'm not paying that much for <laughs> Good it. Good old inflation. Yeah. Well, but my point is, is now I regret right. not having clicked that button back a month ago right. and bought it while it was cheaper. You don't want to be in February going, oh man, I wish I would have coached this thing. It would have been so much fun. And this isn't last minute. We are in that's, October. That's right. Plenty we are talking about a class, a journey, a life-changing journey that is starting in January. So there's no excuses. If you're feeling led to do this, Jump online to runforgod.com. Click on the coaching tab. By the way, you're hearing me say runforgod.com. Runforgod.com and Run for God Run Club by this point are one now. So you can type in either one. It's going to take you to the same website. Uh, a lot of confusion has been cut out. But I, I just can't say it enough. Join us on this journey. We've also got some other exciting news that we've kind of been keeping secret that we're going to re be releasing here in the next few weeks. Um We've we've kind of been testing a, a theory out, and we're going to be talking about that a little bit more, which is going to it's going to open the door for even more people, and we're excited about that. But go to runforgod.com, click on coaching, click on the Couch to Marathon Challenge, and get signed up today. And if you're out there and you got and you've been a, an instructor and you know about Run for God, you've been around for a long time, you realize that at one point in time we had the 5K challenge, and then we had the 10K slash half marathon mm -hmm. challenge material, right? Sure. Now we've got four sets of curriculum. Now right. we have the five K challenge, we have the ten K challenge, we have the half marathon challenge, and we have the marathon challenge, and they're all separate. It's brand new. So for those of you who have taught the five K challenge before, and you're like, it's the same stories over and over. No, it's not this year. Right. It's it's basically fifty two weeks or forty eight weeks of different stories. Right. Right. So it's it just keeps getting better. Can you tell we're excited about it? We are excited. This All right. Is awesome. Go join us. If your teen is into rock and metal music that makes your ears bleed and your grandmother clutch her pearls, we can help. If your spouse yearns for music from the old days and wants to relive the music of their glory years, we can handle that. If you need a break from the day to spend time with God and recognize His goodness, we'd love to be a part of that. Whether it's rock and metal, classic songs from decades past, or heartfelt worship music, J Radio has you covered. Sign up for an account at jradio.com and download the app in your app store to start listening for free today. All right, we're back and uh, we're going to we're going to talk about a story here, aren't we? Yep. Somebody who is a current run club member. Yep. Um in good standing. This who, is a fairly new guy too. I, I yeah. I've I've seen him quite a bit. He's mm -hmm. very active on there mm -hmm. and um uh, He's got a great story. He does. And so we're going to share his story. And it's going to be pretty cool to share his story. But we've got literally hundreds, maybe thousands of people out there who, who are listening to this right now who have never shared their story with us. I don't understand that. We we want to hear your story. Now, we've talked about this before. We're not We're not going to beat this dead horse too much. But no matter how vanilla, how plain, how mundane you think your story is it's your story that's right it's your best testimony and people need to hear it because everybody's story no matter how plain they think it is somebody needs to hear it 
And that's all we're that's simply all we're doing on here is is pushing these stories out because we know that that we're just the messengers. God is God is the one who will use these stories to touch people's lives, and He's done it. We hear it over and over and over again about how somebody related to somebody's story. It it may be a story that I thought was a good story, but it, it really didn't hit me. But it just impacts somebody else's life profoundly. And yeah. we don't know who those people are. We don't know when that's going to happen. So that's why we need to just keep putting these things out. And we need you to keep submitting your story. If you've never submitted your story, by all means, we need to hear it. And think about this from a story standpoint. Last week we had somebody on on the podcast mm -hmm. who said that she wishes her testimony was vanilla. Mm -hmm. She'd been through drug addiction with her son, which sure. is a very, very traumatic and tough thing to deal with. And she wishes that hers, think about this. When you've been through all these really, really tough times, there's a reason why you came to the foot of the cross, right? Mm -hmm. You kind of got to your wits end. Well, think about this. If you've got a vanilla testimony, if you feel like your testimony is not that special, think about how you got to the foot of the cross without that stuff. That may be a bigger miracle than coming to the sure. cross with all of that baggage, right? Yeah. So everybody's story is special and we want you to share it and this week we have a story from justin schmidt um we can go through a lot of emotions in the span of just a few hours when it comes to running we've, we've been there right uh, <laughs> i was there yesterday yeah and so justin does just that in his story that he shares this week his story is called i think i can i think i can wow i just did I like to push people. I see the best in people. I believe in people when they don't believe in themselves. <clears throat> but I struggle believing in myself. I am very competitive. I always try to win everything I do. My friend wanted to do Fort for Fitness in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Since I am so competitive, I said, sign me up. It's only four miles. That's a piece of cake. Trainee? Nah, I don't need it. <laughs> I made it to the race early in the morning where I was put in Group B, also known as the Fast People. With butterflies going crazy, the cannon fires, I start running, and hundreds of people flew past me. I thought I made a mistake, and I was ready to quit. And then my friend said, turn around. There was a wall of people behind me. Oh, yeah, I've got this, I said. In no time, I'm already passing the first mile marker. But by the time I reached mile two, it seemed like I had been running for years. And then we found out we had taken a wrong turn. Oh, no. I told my running partner to go on without me. And she said, you got this. And at some point in this story, I'm not sure if Justin conflated two races or he switches to another race. Uh, but he starts talking about a half marathon at some point in here. So this uh, to continue. Before long, my feet developed blisters. I'm tired and sweaty, and I just don't believe I can make it. And then some of the marathon runners encouraged me, saying, You got this. Fight through. Don't quit. Eventually, I saw the 12-mile mark. There was only one mile to the finish line. My running partner wanted to run faster, and she got an unexpected burst of energy. Our 13th mile turned out to be our fastest mile, 7 minutes and 56 seconds. When we entered the stadium, people were cheering so loudly that I felt like the winner of the race. 2 hours, 56 minutes, 56 seconds. We did it. Wow. How many times have you been there in a race where you're like, I don't know if I can make it to the finish line? A lot. Yeah. <laughs> a lot. But it's amazing, just like Justin talks about, it's amazing what a finish line here in you know, I've talked about on here my first Ironman, and yeah. just at mile twenty four or whatever, you're you're out in no man's land in Panama City, but coming back, you see, you can see the lights and you start to hear the music about a mile away, and it's amazing yeah. what, and that is nothing physical. That just goes to show us that we're not as physically bad as we feel like we are in the moment because circumstances can change our pace it can change our attitude it can change our demeanor if if we could figure out if somebody could figure out how to bottle a finish line experience 
and you could put that in your pocket, you'd be a gazillionaire. <laughs> yeah. Because everybody would buy that. For sure. For but sure. it's it just goes to show you how mental it is. It's true. I remember running a race. It was Calhoun, Georgia. And in Calhoun, they had this race that uh, it was just a regular old 5K at one point. Well, they decided to change the course and run it from one of the local high schools, one of the county high schools, into downtown Calhoun, mm -hmm. and where it finished in the downtown area, right in the middle of the, the town. And uh, so I, I went and I ran that race, and I ne I'll never forget it. I, I've never heard anything like it. I ran that race, and, and I was winning the race. And so I came down this hill for this last finish, and it looked like the whole town of Calhoun was there at the finish line. And they had the band from the high school. They had the cheerleaders jumping up and down, screaming at the top of their lungs. It was louder than a football game. It was unbelievable. As I finished, they were so loud. And I felt like at that point in time, if there were a brick wall at the finish line, I could have run right through it. You felt like you just won the New York City Marathon. I, I really did. <laughs> I really did. It was really, really cool. But you, your point is the energy that you get. And it was like, I didn't even feel like I'd run a race at that point. Yeah, it's it's so, I mean, just like I was talking about in, in the race I was talking about, you know, just one mile before that, You're I dying. felt like death <laughs> was coming into my body. I felt like literally I could just lay down and probably not wake up. Yep. And then literally 10 minutes later, you're a completely different person. And nothing yeah. physical happened. Yeah, It was yeah. all mental and circumstantial, which there's a whole lesson right there. Yeah, and I don't know if you're like me. When I get in the middle of these things, and, and it's long, like, a, like an Ironman, mm -hmm. like a marathon, and I'm at 16 miles and I'm already dying, you mm -hmm. know, in a marathon. It's, all you can think about is get to the next mile marker. Yeah. You know, just get to the next mile marker and then we'll figure out how to get to the one after it. Sure. And, and you just, you do that step by step. And it's, it's amazing how, when you just break it down like that, and it sounds like that's what Justin was kind of doing in his race. Yeah. Just, just get to the next spot and then we'll worry about how we get to the next spot. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's, I guess it's like somebody hitchhiking, <laughs> you know, I hitchhike yeah, as far as you'll, true. as yeah. far as you'll take me. And yeah. then I got to, I'll find somebody else. Yeah. And that's kind of the way it is. You're just going to find a way. Yeah. Uh, and, and eventually, if you'll do that and just be persistent with it, your body will eventually cooperate and get you there. Yeah. Yeah. The best runners find it when they need it. They don't save for it. That's true. Yep. Scripture passage number one, Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. This is such a great scripture. When things are going south, you, uh, you love seeing this one, don't mm -hmm. you? Yeah. Uh, you know, you see it on the back of T-shirts all the time. And sometimes it's in those races where things are going tough and you see that and you're like, all right, you're right. I can. Yeah. But then if you look at this verse kind of how in context of yeah. how, how it was written, being content, you know, so many times, especially when a race isn't going the way you want it. Let's let's take your Boston Marathon that you were talking about. You know, if you, you, you've got to be content sometimes in the agony. In, in your circumstances, mm -hmm. you know, the race isn't going how I want it, but God just allowed me to be content here. And and so many times things will turn around, but too many times we panic and we try to overcompensate or, or do something just crazy, like, like well, step out of the race. Oh yeah. I was going to say, we run away from the, right. the pain. Yeah. And, and you know, I saw that again this weekend in the Chattanooga Ironman. I was so upset. I don't like to see professional athletes. You know, the guy that was, he was telling everybody he was going to win this race. And then he, he, he had a solid third and he stepped out and, yeah. you know, but kind of back to the point is sometimes we just got to be content. We got to, we got to, we got to live in that moment, whatever that is, that agony, because there's so many lessons that can be learned there and it'll make you stronger for the next time. So sometimes you just got to be content. Yeah. You know, I remember, uh a race it was a 10k up in chattanooga and i just I, I still to this day have no idea what happened but it was it was a it was a really really bad race and i don't usually if i have a bad race you know i'm, I'm 30 seconds slower than i plan to be mm -hmm. maybe a minute in a, in a 10k but in this case i was like three minutes off of where i wanted to, i mean I, I just couldn't run the second half of the race and um i could have you know i could have done the same thing there i could have just stepped off the course but you know what happened that day there were a couple of guys that beat me, never beat me. Mm -hmm. Now, what, what am I? What am I doing to them if I drop out of the race? Right? 
Mm-hmm. They, they, they don't get to say that, well, I beat Dean. Now, in the end, they may go, well, you didn't have a good race and all that, but they still have the satisfaction of crossing the finish line before I did. Sure. And, um, and if I drop out of the race, then I take that away from them. So this guy who, fin- who, who drops out in third, ha- you know, he, he's, he's depriving the people ahead of him, in my opinion. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, of course, those two guys probably loved it that he dropped out because well, he's he's a mouth it. runner. He runs his mouth a little bit, <laughs> but but the other side of that is is he don't know. I mean, yeah, he was eight minutes behind, but eight minutes in an Ironman is is not much, especially with everything that can happen on my last half of a marathon. That an is Ironman, true. so many things can happen. He he was he discounted the fact that you never know what those two guys in front of you are dealing with. Yeah. I mean, they could have, they could have bonked. Yeah. I mean, it happens all the time, mm-hmm. even to the professional athletes. Yep. But I, yeah, we'll, we'll kind of get off that hole. Yeah. I just don't like to see. I just don't like people pulling out. You know, fight again another day. No, you know, yeah. because what does that say to the lady that's fighting to get to the seventeen-hour cutoff? Yeah. And you're on the road to do this in sub eight hours and. Yeah. 759 is not good enough and so you just pull out. What is that saying to the lady behind you that's 9 hours yeah behind you? I just for sure. Yeah. Well, we know how you feel about yeah, that. Yeah, you now. do. <laughs> James 1 2 through 4. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let, patience, let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Man, a great follow-up. Yeah, to what right. we were just talking about. That's I mean, exactly it. if if you're content in that agony, if you're content, this if you use the right words, this can be talking about our walk with Christ or a marathon. Yeah, it really can be either. Yeah, you know, things are gonna go bad at times. It's not if it's when, mm-hmm. and when things go bad, how do you handle that? Mm-hmm. Do you do you check out when your when your job gets bad? Do you just quit? Because you're gonna have you're gonna have bad days at work. I sure. have bad days at work. Sure. You have bad days at work. Sure. Do you just quit? No. So why why in a in a race should you just quit? Because there's so many things that are learned through the struggles. And I'm sure, you know, when athletes like that are coming up through the amateur rankings and even, they they weren't taught to do that. I don't know where at what point do professional athletes get taught? Well, if your race isn't going well, just pull out yeah that's a good point i, don't I mean they're know. not taught that from coaches when they're young coming through no. I, I don't yeah i don't know why i keep going back to that it's because i saw it this weekend again, right and it really just got under my got yeah. in my crawl um but yeah i i love i love this verse it's we you say it all the time if you don't have the bad days you got nothing to compare the good ones to yeah and they're important yeah we don't like them but they're critically important to our walk with Christ. Yeah, and this is saying we should actually think of trials as blessings. Yeah. Right? And that's that's hard to do. That's very moment. hard to do. But, but, but looking it, back, it's very easy to do. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I've had I've had a I've had a deadline. I I got to try to we get we're doing a bunch of writing mm-hmm. over a short period of time and I'm trying to get all that stuff done. And so my my watch is telling me I ain't getting enough sleep. <laughs> But you know what? I can look back on it now. I'm t- I'm beat, right? I'm tired. But I look back at it now, and I and it, and I'm glad. And you hit the deadline. I'm glad yeah. I didn't sleep. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> because it it feels good to know. And you that did an you, awesome job, well, by the way. Well, to get to gay get was the, bragging on you just yesterday. Was she? she was well, reading, yeah. you know how gay is. She's gonna brag <laughs> on me no matter what I do. I don't uh, know about that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it, it, the idea of trials produce patience Mm -hmm. and we need lord knows i need patience Mm -hmm. um and that's why we should count it all joy because it produces patience so it's good practicing anything makes us better at it so practicing being patient practicing counting counting it as joy uh, is no different you know that's one of those they call them dangerous prayers yeah lord give me patience yes (laughs) Debbie tells me that all the time. Yeah. She's like, don't pray for patience. <laughs> I'm like, Because uh, he won't give you patience. Right. He'll give you opportunities to exercise <laughs> that, patience. That's, that's right. Yep. Uh, uh, and this one is Justin's favorite. 1 Corinthians nine twenty four. 
do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it. You think that's similar to 1 Corinthians 10.31, you know, where he says, you know, about whether you eat, drink, whatever you do. Do it for the glory of God. Yeah. Yeah, I think it, I, I think it's a mindset. You know, it's... It's doing the best to our of our ability at whatever we're doing. Not not the best. This isn't saying win the race. You have to win the race or else. Right. It, it's saying run, train, practice your faith. Do everything in such a way that you plan to do your absolute best, which is the way that the person who wins the race trains. Right. right. The person who wins the race does everything they can do to try to win the race. Well, we're supposed to do those same things regardless of whether we're going to be first across the line or not. Yeah, you know, I and what you just said kind of hit me this morning. I went out, and uh, Lane had a workout. Lane, uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and talk about this a little bit on here, but he, he's he's got hit by the um, a little bit of iron deficiency that kind of snuck up on us, and we didn't know it was as bad as it was until uh, it had already put damaged his running pretty bad. Um, so we... We got him tested. We figured out the problem. We got him back on a supplement, and he's 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 on the road back to where he was. It's going to take a little bit of time. But Lane got out there this morning. I went out and, and time to work out for him, and I, I'm so proud of him during this season because honestly, he had a his first collegiate race was a disaster. Yeah. I mean, it was that's when we realized something's going on, and then. The last race, his his coach sat him out, and, and it was the right call. And, and the race this weekend, he sat him out, and it's the right call. But I went out this morning to to time Lane on his race, and, and Lane came out, and you would not have any clue that his running isn't where it should be or where, it, where he wants it to be right. because he prepped for this workout just like he prepped for every other workout before. His mindset was, I've had a setback. But I'm going to do everything I can do to get back, and and because of that, he's charging back quickly. I would say in the next three or four weeks, he'll he'll be back pretty close to where he was. But too many times we have these setbacks, and we just throw up our hands and say, I, "That's it must not be hard. for me. It's too hard. It's it's you know the circum we let our circumstances dictate our attitude." And that's what that's what Paul is saying here is run in such a way that you may obtain it. That in in Lane's case, he's literally running in such a way his times aren't where he wants them right now, but he has a good attitude. He knows that this is this is a set of stairs to get back to where he was. And we all need to have that mentality, even in our walk with Christ, because so many times our walk with Christ gets hard, right? That's right. And yeah. It's it would be easy, and I've seen many people just throw in the towel. Yeah, you know they're very active in church. They're very committed to walking step for step with God, and and something happens. Yeah, and they're gone. Yeah, I've seen and that. and it's it's sad. And, and you know, number one, we need to reach out to those people because sure. many times it's encouragement is what they need, but. It's it's all a mind. I mean, this is a theme here. It's a mindset. It's it's how you think about things when things get hard. Are you going to throw in the towel, or are you going to keep doing what you're you're doing with the attitude that it's going great? Yeah, you know, I think a lot of people think, well, that's not fair that I have to do this extra work to overcome this extra burden that I didn't ask for. Right. You know, that's what Lane could say is like, well, why should I have to work extra hard? Sure. To overcome something that uh, I shouldn't I shouldn't have had to overcome. Well, you know what? It's there. Right. It doesn't matter whether it's fair. You, we can all discuss the definition of fair versus unfair and, and all of that. The bottom line is it's, it's where we are. And we see it all the time in athletes who um, they, that we, we, we got athletes that every time they, they put their shoes on, they give it a, the exact right effort. Mm-hmm. If it's supposed to be all out, it's all out. If it's whatever pace it's supposed to be, it's at that pace. They they do exactly what they need to do. Mm-hmm. When they're not running, 
They're in the ice bath. They're doing all the things that they can do to make themselves the best they can be. And then you see so many who just, oh, it's hot today. Well, that hot, you know what that is? That's an opportunity. That's the trial Mm -hmm. that he's talking about in James that uh, it's an opportunity to overcome something hard. And be stronger going forward. That's right. That's, you know, so many athletes think it's all about the workouts. Mm -hmm. It's all about the workouts is what makes me faster. And while that is true, that's only half of it. That's right. It's, you got to do things, you know, we call them character builders sometimes. (laughs) We've given workouts to our young athletes before that we know they're not going to finish this. Now, some of them will surprise us. Yeah. But we call those character builders. It, the, the damage that it might do to you physically, and I say damage in a way that it's probably not the right workout for the at that time, that damage is offset by the, the character that you build. Because mm-hmm. in a race, when things get hard, yes, you're, you're going to fall to your training, but you're also going to fall to how you react when things get hard. And that's part of training. You know, you don't Wait, I don't know who said this, but somebody said you don't you don't rise to the occasion, you, you fall to your training. Mm-hmm. And training is not just physical. Yeah, training is is in the mind. Yeah, yeah, that's a what a great analogy for for all of that. How about this question? Why do you do things to help your friends, but won't do it on your own? Isn't that a great question? Because we do, right? That's I've got so, a lot of things running through my head right that, now. Like. That is so true. We'll we'll go so far out of our way to help somebody else accomplish a tough thing, and then won't do that tough thing ourselves. That's kind of a convicting question yeah. when you really think about it. <laughs> Justin, you're meddling here. Uh, <laughs> I see. I you, I see people all the time that they won't run if they don't have somebody to run with. It's just right. too hard to get out there on my own and do it, and so I I just not going to do it. Right. Why is that? I, I don't know. I, maybe it's, I don't know. Because I think there's there's times where somebody thinks, well, they're helping somebody else when they go out and they do it with somebody else. There's that sentiment. But then there's the sentiment that um, it's just, it's too hard to do on my own. And so I don't want to do the hard thing. And I, I think that's often the case. But he's asking about why do we do things to help your friends? And I think that's a little bit different, sto- uh, different question. But um I don't understand that sentiment that because there are people who do. It's not that they won't run. It's that maybe they don't even care to run, but somebody else is running. So now I'll go do it. It's not that I won't do it on my own. It's that I I don't want to do it, but I'll do it for you. And and okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna jump over the other side. Sometimes that's okay. You know, I, I, I think about I think about the instructors out there, the coaches out there. Yeah. Who you, you gotta you gotta define your relationship with whatever we're talking about. I, my talk last night was define the relationship. So it's one thing to say it's one thing to say, I don't want to run alone. And it's a totally different thing to say, I can't. That's run correct. Alone. Yeah. That, you yeah. know, some of our coaches out there. I have been very transparent and say if if I didn't have my group, I I probably wouldn't run because I enjoy it. That's what makes running fun for me. Mm -hmm. And if that's the relationship with running, then that's okay. The problem comes in when you hear, you start to hear people make excuses. Yeah. And and I'm going to tread lightly here, but people say, well, I, I can't run, so therefore I walk. For a lot of people, it's, I want to walk. And and we're going to get into this much more in the next few weeks, but that's okay. But you, you need to be honest with yourself, and you need to be honest with those around you. I just had an email from one of our Run Club members about that. Mm-hmm. Um, we have quite a few Run Club members who like the Galloway method. Mm-hmm. I'm not a fan of the Galloway method. I'm not either. And that, yeah. That. Because what the Galloway method does is it tells us that we should look forward to the easier parts. Right. And, and I don't like that. Now, let me say this very, very clearly. If you love the Galloway method and that's what you want to do, just like you were just saying, then, then have at it. 
Don't say it makes me faster. But yeah, don't say it makes me <laughs> faster and don't say I can't do it any other way. Right. Because that I know 100% is not true. And and that's where we were we were kind of going back and forth and she was uh, she was so gracious mm -hmm. in her responses to my very direct answers to her. Um and, and she's going to go back out there and try 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 a little bit different and, and I think it's great if you're realistic with yourself, but don't let yourself go to that place where you say, I can't. Just don't do that. Right. Don't ever start anything. I mean, you, we learned this in elementary school, right? Sure. Don't ever say, I can't. And, but we do it as adults all the time. We, we, want, we want something to let us off the hook. And, and this, yeah. we're, we're, we're not talking about running anymore. We're, we're talking about a lot of things in life yeah. that I... I can't do that job. What? Yeah. I, is it really that you just don't want to do that job? And if that's the case, that's okay. Yeah. It's it's all about being honest with yourself because, you know, the the first step to any kind of growth is accepting where you're at, being honest with where you're at and what your goals are and what you want to do. Um, we'll get into that more. Well, this this question, you know, this gets under my skin a little bit. A little bit because there's I remember I did my I did my first Ironman knocked it out of the park had a great race mm -hmm. then I did a half Ironman knocked it out of the park had a great race and I was done and then a stinking friend of mine talked me into running some more um some more triathlons well, okay. and uh you gotta have that friend I ruined a perfect record though <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, that would, yeah. Well, if, for those of you who don't know, that friend is sitting across from me right now. Uh, I don't think you're done with them. I really oh, I'm don't. done with them. No, I'm done with them. I am done with them. You heard it here first. Yes. I don't think he's done with them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, what drives you more, fear of finishing last or fear of not finishing? Mm. You know, I. I, I read this question, and the here's the first thing that ran through my mind, and I, and I hate to kind of hate to be this way, but I don't think about either. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't think about finish. I don't care if I finish. Now I've been in races where that was a possibility, um, but that's not that's not a thing that's going to run through my head. And and I think that's that's the danger is why why are you even entertaining that thought? Either one of those thoughts. Well, but I think there are people who really think about that you know I, I think about i'm not saying it's not a possibility right but i'm saying wh why does it matter yeah you know true you know i i remember I, I went i ran this indoor track meet and that was my goal was not to finish last right but this is saying fear of finishing last i wasn't mm -hmm. afraid of finishing last if i ran a good race and i finished last and i finished last i'm okay with that yeah but um i i was trying not to, that was my goal mm -hmm. but it wasn't, I, I guess that's what bothers me, the fear of finishing last or the fear of not finishing. It shouldn't be a fear. It should be a, hey, if you put everything you got into it and you finish last, nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. I, you know, we've got these kids that run cross country. We've got some that'll finish middle, maybe even toward the front of the pack who just don't even run hard. And then we've got others that finish near the back of the pack that run there. They run so hard. Mm -hmm. Give me that back of the packer sure. every single time. Right? Well said. Yeah. I remember uh, I remember my, my one and only Ironman distance triathlon. Well, since we're talking about triathlons. And I remember starting, starting the run. This is kind of the mindset, right? The, your mindset is so, so incredibly important. And I remember giving my bike up handing it off to somebody and thinking, I don't want to see that thing for quite some time. <laughs> but I remember I have a marathon left to run, right? And I remember thinking, man, I'm almost done. <laughs> you know that, that very few people think that. Yeah, but that you know, thinking things on the positive side right. rather than the negative side. Um I just don't like I don't like to give in to those bad possibilities, I guess. Yeah. And and sometimes it is bad. Sometimes it is bad. I mean I've had I had to I one of those half iron mans in Austin, Texas, um, should have been great. There was no swim. It should have been the greatest moment of my life, right? <laughs> yeah. And uh, the swim was canceled for the, whatever reason. Yeah, yeah, the swim was canceled for fog. Fog, yeah. And then um, so we did this. I did the and I did the bike, and 
I, I had a hamstring issue, and I almost dropped out. Hmm. But uh, I thought I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try a little bit longer, and I'm convinced. I am absolutely convinced that that's what God wanted to, wanted me to do. I, I, I stepped off the course. Debbie was right there. I stepped off the course, and and I said, "This hamstring is this is it hurts. This is really bad, and I just don't know that I can finish." And she said, "Well, you know," she kind of looked at me, and I said, "I'm gonna run another quarter mile back around to this other side, and I'm gonna see how it feels." I don't. I'm telling you, God said, "Okay, you passed the test." Hmm. I got back on the race course, and I finished that race, and I finished it faster than I started it, the the half marathon portion. Yeah. Um, and I just think God gives us tests like that all the time. When it's hard, just dig in, dig your heels in a little harder. <laughs> Last question. The seeds you plant today, you will harvest in the future. And when it comes time to harvest, you can say, I made this. This is my masterpiece. Isn't it worth putting in the work now? It's a good question. Yeah, it's a great question. We've talked about that whole that we've on this podcast before about delayed gratification mm-hmm. and the idea of working hard today for for the payoff tomorrow. Right. Um, it's it's like we've talked about a million times where we talk about how we don't feel good, but we go out to run anyway, and we never come home and go, "Gosh, I wish I wouldn't have done that." Mm-hmm. You know, we're always glad we did it. So every time, yeah, yeah, it's always worth putting in the work. And you know what? Sometimes we put in the work and we don't get anything out of it. You know, there's times where we, we've done stuff and we've had to just kind of put it to the side and maybe we had to throw something away. Maybe, we, you know, whatever it is. Sometimes that happens. Yeah. And those those times, that's a bummer. Yeah. But it ain't the end of the world either. You get know? up and you do it again. Yeah, yeah. Because you get the, up and you do it again. And the next time, it works out much better. Right. But then there's things, you know, I, I, I start looking at this question from a spiritual standpoint. You know, there, there's things that we plant today that we may never harvest. Yeah. Um, but we keep planting. Yeah. Scripture's clear about that mm-hmm. because I'm convinced. I'm convinced when we all get to heaven, we're gonna we're gonna see people that that we impacted that we had no idea. Yeah. I think- I, I, I believe and I hope that that's the case because. How cool is it going to be to somebody to walk up to you, or you walk up to somebody and say, you know, I and I've actually done this here before. You know, pick up the phone and call somebody and say, you didn't even know I was in the room, but I heard what you said and it was awesome. Yeah, and I think we're going to see more and more of that, and that's that's the attitude we need to have going through our everyday life is that we're impacting people that we don't even know are around us, mm-hmm. but they're watching us, and it's it's how we. It's how we carry ourselves. You know, I was on a job yesterday. I was talking to a crane operator. And we stood there and we talked for probably 15 minutes. Um, they were setting a big a big manhole in a, in a pit on a job that we're doing. And this guy, he's probably 28, 30 years old and kind of a hippie type of guy. And um, he actually grew up around here, but he lives in Chattanooga now. So we just stood there and talked for probably 15 minutes. And, um, uh, Somebody came up to me talking, and and when they left, the crane operator looked at me and said, "Are you in charge of this job?" I said, "Yeah." He said, "Man, usually the usually the boss men, they're just jerks." He said, "You're different," and I was uh, like, "Thanks." Yeah. I, I hope I. Yeah. And it's just another example of I mean I I I got to hear that. Mm-hmm. But we have the opportunity to make those kind of impacts everywhere we go because there's always somebody watching. And I mean, I I was that made my day that I wasn't the jerk yeah. that he was talking about because that's common in our society and we just need to be different. And the truth is, is that that's a that's a story and it's great. But there are many others out there. Those are the ones you're talking about where you had an impact that you're not going to hear about. Right. right? I got a text recently from Co. You remember Co. Yeah, that ran in yeah. Color Creek. He ran like twenty six and a half minutes for a, for an eight k. Yeah, I mean it's crazy fast for him. He's come a long, long yeah. way, and um, he was so excited about it. And he's he's told me on a number of occasions it all started with you. It all started mm-hmm. with the base that you gave me. And you know y- you hear that, but for every Co. that's out there, there's somebody else who doesn't say it. 
Yeah. And um, and it, it you just got to know they're out there. Yeah, it's great. It's great to hear it. It's great to get the text from Co and the comment from this guy. But we have to understand that the things we do, the things we say, the way we carry ourselves, the attitude, the sportsmanships we have, people are watching us. Yeah. And we're making those impacts and. We're, yeah. we're planting the seeds every... We're either planting good seeds or we're planting bad seeds. And we just have to... We have to remember the code comments. We have to remember this crane yes. opera comments because we need to do more of that. That's exactly right. We need right. to be different. We yeah. need to be different than the other job guys. We need to be different than the other coaches. We need to be different in everything we do because we're Christ's. Yeah. We belong to Christ, so we are different. Yeah. And we need to act that way. Well said. While you are working hard to keep your body in shape physically, the music you listen to while you run can help keep you in shape spiritually. We have partnered with J Radio to put together a group of running playlists by Mitchell, Lane, Holly, me, and others that you hear on the Run Club podcast. Plus, you can listen to a playlist put together by members of Run Club just like you. Check out the whole station of Run For God playlist now at jradio.com and in the J Radio app. All right, we're back, and boy, the weather is turning to fall. Well, it did for a week, well, and now yeah, it's hot again. Yeah, but you know it's... That's a bummer. But that's okay, because I know it's coming. Yeah. I know yeah, it's I coming. Yeah, I mean, last week we were... I was in a hoodie. Yeah. A few it's, mornings. It's true. Uh, yeah. Last cross country meet, I wore a hoodie. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's coming. It's right around the corner. Yeah. Cross country is in the air. It is. Uh, I, I love the the feeling of it. Yeah. Um, when we had a couple of meets in that cool morning, it's it's amazing. It's funny how much faster people run. Yeah. Some in of that them. Cool weather. Most of them. <laughs> yeah. Most of them. Yeah. Yeah. Not all of them. Um, I, you know, I use this app and it adjusts for heat. It says, okay, if I run a 25 minute 5k, then in it, it's one temperature, here's the difference between 70 degrees and 85 degrees. Mm -hmm. According to that app, that difference is far greater than any of us give it credit for. You know why I don't like that app why? or why I don't like that conversion? Because many people, you won't. But many people will look at that and give themselves permission to run slower. Yeah. I think there again, we've talked about this before, that's data. And it's great to look back, but don't plan forward with it. You know, if you're supposed to run a a eight minute long run, try your hardest to run an eight minute long run, no matter how hot it is. That's that's kind of my Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you buy into the same thing. Well, I, and I do, and I'll tell you why. Because when I was in high school, we never, ever, ever talked about the weather. Yeah. We never talked. We just didn't. Coach didn't bring it up. We didn't bring it up. We've never it's allowed just, our kids to talk about it. We never talked Don't about it. Don't say that. Yep. And so, um, consequently, my times back then, they were very close. It didn't matter what the what the weather was. Cold, hot, it didn't matter. Mm -hmm. I was, I was going to be close. And I think it kind of that kind of tells you because I do think that the the difference is there is a substantial difference. Sure. Now how much it is I don't know, but there is a substantial difference. But back then I never gave myself any room to make that excuse, and so and and I think consequently today I still, if I run a lot slower in the heat, my brain still says well, you should have ran faster. You shouldn't use that as an excuse. And see, I don't think that's a bad thing. Yeah. I don't. I don't. Of course, I'm a. We're both a little more hardcore than yeah than some coaches because I just think that's you know, if it's 90 degrees on race day, it's 90 degrees on race day. If you've trained for that and and prepared yourself for that, that's it's, it's a lot running in the rain. How many are you know how how many teams cancel practices now? Yeah, because it's because raining. It's, yeah, that yeah. is so wrong. Yep. It's just so wrong because race day, if it's raining. They don't cancel the race. Count it all joy that it's raining before right. practice. <laughs> yeah. I'll never forget a race that Lane did years ago. Um, he did really well in it. I don't I don't remember what place he got, but it was pouring down rain. It was in Richmond, Virginia. 
you know, it's absolutely pouring. I've got a great picture of him coming out of transition, and it is just pouring. There were wrecks all over that course. People were crashing right and left because crashing on their bikes because nobody rides in the rain anymore. Yeah. You know, the yeah. local group here, if it's raining, they cancel. Well, we never cancel practice. I never, ever one time canceled a practice. And if it was raining, we rode. Did some kids fall? Yeah. But I would rather them fall in practice than in a race. Yeah. And, and Lane just, he wheeled around everybody because he was used to riding in the rain and everybody else wasn't. You know, I had to officially cancel a practice not long ago. Did you really? I did. What happened? COVID. Everybody technically was um, exposed. But that was kind of out of your hands. It was out I of mean, my it hands. It was, you were being told. I, did, I didn't choose to. Right. It was, but I will. If I know you, you would have separated everybody six foot and said, be there. Well, it's funny. I I don't know what happened, but the girls chose to do that workout on their own that day. Was that was that the day I pulled up? Yeah. And they were all there. Yeah. 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 And you were like, nobody's supposed to be here. Yeah. But good they, for them. I mean, they all, they all showed up. They, they all, they all did the workout. So, yeah. 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 So you really didn't. Yeah, socially I mean, distanced. They they had their practice. Mm -hmm. So yep. yeah, I I wear that as a badge of honor that <laughs> we never cancel practice. All right, Dean's thoughts. All right, it's time for Dean's thoughts, and that's the time when I share something I've written about the intersection between running and faith. Do you like to run on trails? No. <laughs> or you're more like me, and you prefer the roads. Well, let's talk about that debate right now. This one is called the case for trail running. Some people like to run on the road or sidewalk, while others prefer a trail. There are other surfaces like treadmills and synthetic tracks, but most outdoor running falls into a smooth, firm surface versus a softer, yet more uneven surface. So which one is better? Neither and both. If you have ever entered into a debate about which is better, you have no doubt heard that running on trails prevents injury because the softer surface is easier on your joints. However, that is only half the story. More recent studies show that running on trails produces more accidents that result in injury. That makes sense. You are far more likely to fall on a trail than on the road. Chances are that you prefer one or the other, but there are benefits to running on both. A good training plan will address many needs and varying surfaces provide different results. If you're smart about the way you train, you can take advantage of the benefits of each. When it's time to run fast, a firm, smooth foundation will help you run faster. If you're going to be racing on the roads, then it makes sense to train that way. If your training is intense and you're focusing on hitting interval splits, a flat surface will help you gauge your fitness through each workout. Running on undulating, uneven surfaces will slow you down, making it more difficult to see improvement from one workout to another. But it's still a good idea to run on trails occasionally. Why? Do you have a diff difficulty in doing the extra things like core work and strength training? Trail running will help you. The varied terrain, uneven footing, twists and turns, the hilly elevation, they all combine to force us to engage our core muscles and develop power and strength. Although it doesn't take the place of strength training, it will help to make you stronger and provide a little injury prevention. Do you ever find yourself having to be careful around roots, rocks, and holes? If you tend to spend time on the ground when these things are present, it probably means you should do more of it. Increasing your trail running frequency will help you with your form. When you run around in the obstacle that are presented on a trail, it forces you to lift your knees higher to avoid tripping over that route. It also requires you to use your arms to keep your balance. Don't think your arms are important for running? Try running with your arms by your side. Do you want to run faster? A stronger, more efficient runner is a faster runner. If you're concerned with running faster, trail running is a great way to facilitate improvement. Despite persistent rumors that you have to train exclusively on the road to get faster on the roads, it's not true. Trail running will make you faster on both trail and the road. Need another reason to run on trails? Well, do you have stress in your life? Trail running often takes you away from the hustle and bustle of everyday life. Seeing wildlife, the beautiful scenery, and the trees' canopy of protection from the sun's rays are enough to calm even the most tightly wound runners. Get away from the world occasionally, and the stress relief it provides will be worth the effort. 
Solomon tells us in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 that there's a time for everything. He lists a number of opposites like a time to weep and a time to laugh. He didn't say a time for running trails uh, and, a time, and a time for running roads, but that's only because he couldn't list everything. <laughs> like running on varied surfaces will help us to be better runners, taking part in all of life's many challenges and tasks will strengthen our Christian walk. Of course, we have to we have our preferred activities, just like we have our preferences for running surfaces, whether we're working, mourning, having fun, or even running. Whatever we do, we should realize that when God carries out his plan for our lives, he's bringing us closer to him. Sometimes God's plans include taking us out of our comfort zone. Is God telling you to talk to that coworker about a personal issue? Is he telling you to find another job? His plan will often take us where we fear to tread, but the payoff is huge. Trust him today. That's a great story, Dean. <laughs> so I got a question. Did we really need a study that tells us that you fall more on trails? Well, <laughs> I'm just, I'm trying to lend I'm some... the human study there. I, yeah. I could tell you that. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> well, you know, I've told you, I've, I've dislocated my ribs falling on trails. So, um, yeah, I've uh, taken some hard spills before, but it's, um, but I've, I've also tripped on sidewalks. Uh, I've. I've done that too. So um, the five minute fall. Yeah, the, that's right. <laughs> well, I hear a lot of people talk about how much better the trails are because of the impact, um, and it can be true, but it's not always true. And the one that gets me all the time is when somebody says they'd rather run on roads than on a sidewalk because it's softer. And they'll they'll cite a study that sh- that shows that the asphalt is ten times softer than concrete or whatever the number is. I don't even know. But what it's still a thousand times harder than dirt. And, and and it still doesn't give. Right. It's not like when you land on pavement, sure. you, the, it gives like, like running on dirt wheel. Mm-hmm. And so this whole idea that running on asphalt is better than running on concrete is ludicrous, in my opinion. Yeah, I think for, especially for the average 150, 250 pound person. I mean, if you're talking yeah. about a, you know, it, it provides a smoother ride if you're a car, but I don't know anybody that weighs 6,000 pounds. So, I mean, I get what they're saying, yeah. but for the weight to surface ratio, it, it, yeah, that one's never really made sense to me. Yeah, yeah. The, it's interesting. We get better at trails the more we run on them because – I wouldn't I, know. I, I remember – well, here's here's how I know. This is I, I, I'm a human study on that one. Mm-hmm. And, and when I, I've got our number one runner, you know Catherine, mm-hmm. phenomenal runner, I recruited her really hard. Her sister was already on our team. She had the ability to go wherever she wanted. Mm-hmm. And um, she's All-American. She's a great runner. Anyway, when I, I made a promise to her that if she came to Dalton State, that we would run more on trails that, than we normally did. And so I've had to fulfill that promise. Mm-hmm. I made a promise. I'm going to keep my promise. And so we run more on trails. And so consequently, the coach runs more on trails too. And – the coach is better at running on trails hmm. than he used to be. Uh, and I, I've, I've told Catherine a number of times, I give her the credit for me having less injuries when I run on trails. Wow. Now, having said that, I fell right beside her here a couple of weeks ago. But I don't fall as often as I used to. I think you told me about that. <laughs> you didn't get much sympathy when you, when I, you, when you fell. Did I, you? Didn't. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. Catherine doesn't strike me as the one that gives a ton of sympathy. <laughs> for people falling down a uh, funny story i did get back up because the one the one time that i did fall really hard and i dislocated ribs i was running with her sister hmm. and so i always gave her sister a hard time i said she pushed me down and she caused you know she caused me all this pain and so we got through with this run where i fell down and i i told her sister Kay, i said well Kay, i said Catherine must like me a lot better than you because she didn't dislocate my ribs when she pushed yeah. me down <laughs> so yeah it's all in good fun now, one thing I do like about the running on trails is the shade. Mm, yeah. A lot of times, tra- you know, that is the number one reason for me for running on trails is not the surface. Mm-hmm. It's the fact that it's shaded. We've got this new Hague Mill Trail here in Dalton that is, I mean, it is, it's what, 90% shaded. Mm-hmm. And uh, Is it smoother? You know, I haven't ran that since they first built it. And yeah. it was, you remember we met oh, out there that one time yeah. and it was like, what was it three miles, four miles around it, yeah, something like that? It's, and it, it's three miles. But it was like 80% mud, and is it a lot better now? Yeah, there's no mud out there anymore. Um, 
there's still some roots and stuff yeah. which you have on any trail but it's not bad okay. it's, it's a pretty smooth pretty it's a nice place to run so they're keeping the the bobcats and the the equipment off the that was the problem when we when we ran it is like it was they were taking the equipment around the trails which yeah it's kind of a no-no on Yep. Because it was just keeping it tore up. Yeah, but what they did was they took some rock out there and they put it in some of those muddy areas. Mm -hmm. And and all that rock now is sunk down into the the ground. Yeah. And so it's no longer rock. It's dirt, but there's dirt over the top of it. So it's a base. Yeah, it's it's nice. Hmm. It's nice. They've done a they've done a really good job. Go out there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I think this is it's all this is all a perfect metaphor for life. Um we do the things we prefer. And we stay away from the things that are uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. You like to run on the roads, so you run on the roads because mm-hmm. that's where you're comfortable. Mm-hmm. I'm the same way. So I'm the safest. If I'm going to default to something, right. I'm, I'm going to run on the roads. Um, and if it weren't for running with others, sure. I might never run on trails, seriously, ever. Um, it kind of goes back to what we were talking about earlier. Yeah, It's not that you can't run on trails. You just choose I, yeah. not to. But... Because you need to run with others, you you get on the trails and and that's okay too. And there's been a big payoff. There's a choice for it. there. Yeah, I, I'm in better shape. Sure. Because of it, right? Yeah. Um, something I wouldn't have done myself, but I, I got pushed outside of my comfort zone. Right. Um, and it just it's a great metaphor for life. Like I said, because we there's so many times we just want to do those things we like to do mm-hmm. and not do the things we don't want to do. And sometimes the things we don't want to do could be very valuable. Yeah. To us for sure. If you've ever participated in any sport, you've probably met a great coach. Great coaches inspire us to do more than we ever thought possible. You can be the leader that helps others achieve things they never thought possible. You, yes, you have the ability and the opportunity to be that person. All you need is a heart to help people and the ability to follow a plan. The Run for God 5K Challenge will come ready to help you inspire those around you. The step-by-step guide will direct you how to plan, pray, and train people both physically and spiritually. You can help them become more fit in their health and in their walk with Christ. Share your passion. Go to runforgod.com to find out how to inspire others to accomplish big things. All right, we're back. So let's talk coaching and performance a bit. All right. Because uh, we may have listeners who have struggled with this before. So let's look at this athlete. Somebody who runs really great at practice. They're they're killing all the workouts. And then they get to race time and they don't do what the workouts indicate they should do. What do you do about that? you got to learn how to get in their head. Yeah. Because something's in their head. Yeah. It's, it's not a physical thing. It's a – we've seen it. Many, yeah. many times. Um, Lane used to have a problem Yeah. in triathlon. He would just kill the workouts when he was young and then show up for a race, and it's like he fell apart. And it was it was the lack of fitness. It was it was a mental block of some kind. Yeah, yeah. Well, I tried something recently with one of, one of our local athletes mm-hmm. who um, you saw how well Gavin ran mm-hmm. this past week. So what, what I did was, and this is for, for you out there, if you're in this boat – Mm-hmm. Um, this may be something you can try. I gave him a very specific warm up routine that was different than what he had been doing. Um, and then I told him, folk, don't focus on each mile. This course was marked out in kilometers. So mm-hmm. I said, focus on each one K. And so he, he kind of changed the way his brain was thinking during the race. Turned out great. Yeah. I and mean, he had a, he had a big breakthrough this, this past week. And so, um, Sometimes it is. It's it's all about you have to think differently. You can't you can't just keep pounding your head and doing the exact same thing and not do something different. You know, it yeah, it, and I think this is before you came on board with the triathlon team. In fact, I know it was, but we used to do something kind of crazy. I mean, a lot of coaches around the country looked at us like we were morons <laughs> for doing this, but this is when the kids were young. So like eight nine ten years old you know so many times they are a head case at that age it's just like they some of them will focus on the wrong thing or not focus at all or um but it's it's at that age where you can really start to shape the mental side and a few of our athletes they would just lane being the worst one it would come race day and he would just dwell on it you would see him sitting over by himself and 
a lot of coaches would say that's a good thing. He's getting mentally prepared and focused, and but sometimes that's not. Yeah. And so we got to where we took a football to triathlons, and thirty minutes before the race, our kids are out playing football, yeah. and other coaches, you know, they're like, "You shouldn't be doing that. You're ruining the." We wanted to get their minds off the race. Yeah. And and it worked. I mean, so many of these kids got better at racing because, you know, you you can almost take it. There's a point where you take it too serious. Yeah. And many times as adults, we do that even more. You know, it's it's like these things have to happen. And, and you need a system, but you also need to – well, I told Gavin the other day, you know, I hope it didn't go against anything you said, but he came up and talked to me. I said, just quit thinking. Yeah. Just go out there and run. Yeah. Have fun. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, but so many times we get – we take the fun out of it by dwelling on things. Yeah. Yeah, so. we do, we do. And, but oftentimes all it takes is one good experience, right? Right. My, my feeling is now that Gavin's going to be great yeah. going forward. Yeah. He's going to be fine because he had that breakthrough. Right. Um, got another girl on the college team who I've been coaching for four years. Mm-hmm. And we, you and I both know it's always been all about what was between her ears sure. that, was, that was keeping her back. And and she had a huge breakthrough a couple of weeks ago, and followed it up with another even better performance the next week. Who is this? Ella. Okay. Yeah. Um, she's just. I mean, she's knocking. Out, she's running faster than I thought she would. Yeah. But before the, by the end of the year, and we're not even at the end of the year yet. So, um, but it all came down to she did it once. Mm-hmm. Once she did it once, it was like okay, I can do this thing now. Now she's setting her sights on beating other people that she's she beat somebody this weekend she's never beaten before, right? Uh, because she just she's invincible now that she's yeah. done it once, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, you you got to be able to break the cycle of whatever you do, whatever it takes to do that, and it applies to everything, right? So many things. Um, whatever you're struggling with, you have to figure out how can I approach it differently. I remember years ago playing golf at the – I got a chance to play golf at the farm. Have you ever played at the farm? Mm-hmm. I figured you have. It's it's a beautiful golf yeah. course, right? So I go out there, and this was my second or third time I'd played there. And I had a goal for a certain score. And um, by the third hole, that was out the window. It was like – it was there was no way because I had just – I was blowing it. I was, it was awful. And so – I suddenly just kind of, I was getting mad. Mm-hmm. I was getting really angry about what what was going on, and and because um, I had a goal, right? And I just decided, just relax. It's a beautiful day. This is a beautiful place. You don't get to play here very much. Just have fun with it. Mm-hmm. So I I did. You know, I shot eight strokes better than my goal mm-hmm. that day because all, all of a sudden I just relaxed, and all of a sudden everything I hit was great. Yeah. Because I just relaxed. I just thought differently. Right? Yeah. It's it's good to it's good to have a plan. It's good to it's good to think about and visualize, but there there's a line. Yeah. And some you, you you need to think about it. You need to do your plan, you need to visualize, and then you need to just check out. Yeah. Uh and and fall to your training. Right. Yeah. Well, I know there's people there are some people who can think about the race all the way up until race time and be fine with it. Mm-hmm. And if you're successful with that, that's great. What I'm saying is if you, if that's not, if that's you and you're not successful, then you've got to try something different. You may have that person who doesn't think much about the race that needs to think more about it. You, right. you, you just, the, the point is, is it's, you, you got to do something different. Well, many times it, you, you fall to your belief. Yeah. You know, you say, you say, I want to beat that person. But in, in, the, in the pit of your stomach, you don't believe that. You yeah. don't believe you can't. Yeah. And that's where a lot of people get is they revert back to that belief that may be completely false, but you've 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 built it up in your head that I can't beat that person. You know, yeah. Lane Lane kind of had this. He still never beat that person, but now he has the belief that he can. Yeah, and that that's a big paradigm shift there with with all of us. You know, I used to I used to be a smoker. I don't know if we've talked about that on this podcast before. I know I have in in some of our videos, but. You know, I smoked for years. I, I somewhere started smoking when I was young, and um, I wanted I wanted to quit. And so I started taking the <laughs> the gum and the the pills, and I had the patch, and I did all these things, and it, it just never worked. And then I, it finally hit me one day that 
I liked it. And so therefore I, I couldn't quit because I hadn't decided that I really needed to. I, I said I wanted to until one day when I finally said, I'm going to quit. And I, I got my head wrapped around the fact that this is bad for my, I found a reason. I found some good reasons. Mm-hmm. I had kids at the time. Uh, it was bad for my health and I just didn't need to do this anymore. And then I quit with nothing. I yeah. laid them down and never touched them again. But it's because I bought into something rather than just saying something. Yeah. And that's so many times that's what we got to do. We got to find something. We got to find something that we buy into and we believe in. Yep. And then the results come. Yep. 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 Mind is a powerful thing. All right. It's time for a trivia question. This one's pretty short and straight to the point. So here's the question How did cross country get its start? I have no idea. Do you have any idea? No. 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 Do you even know where it started? No. All right. It well, wasn't here. It was not in this country. Yeah. Yeah. Was so. it? I, I will say. I think yeah. I know where it was. I think. You think? No, uh, maybe I don't. Well, no. We'll see. we'll see. We'll see. I'm grasping at straws here. And if you have an answer for that, you can send it to dean at runforgod.com. Not, not customer service at runforgod.com and not Facebook Messenger because... We're going to have a line of people answering this question. I know we are. Surely. And the only way we know who's first is the first person in Dean's inbox. That's right. So how did cross country get its start? This is an interesting one, I think, to research a little mm. bit. So uh, I think it'll be fun. All right. Every week I share a reason why running is so awesome. And this week, this is the reason why running is so awesome. Life translation. <laughs> We we learn so much through running. We've talked about several of those things on this Today, podcast, yeah. right? We make ourselves better able to handle life physically, but we also make ourselves better mentally at the same time. So all of these trials and things that we go through in life, we're able to overcome them physically and mentally because we're runners. Hmm. Yeah. And that's I, I think that's why Paul wrote about running so much because yeah. it is such a great uh, life translation. Motivational thought of the week. Running is not about being better than someone else. It's about being better than you were yesterday. Hmm. Um, that comes from Kano Jigoro. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. Um, I was actually inspired by him. He was the founder of judo. Really? So he probably said this about something else. and It was modified a little bit, but it's a good sentiment. Um, comparison is, well, I like to call it silly and destructive. Yeah. Right? It, it's just... If we're getting, if we're better than today than we were yesterday, success doesn't yeah. matter if we're not as good as somebody else. Sure. Uh, who cares what somebody else is doing? And you and I can get caught up in that a little too much. Maybe sometimes we don't care enough. Probably. <laughs> My wife says that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it's it's funny to me how I, I've seen athletes who get upset because somebody else is improving more than they are. Yeah. Now they're improving, right. but they're upset because well she's improving more than I am. It's like, just stay on the path. Mm -hmm. You don't run the, it's just like in a race. Sometimes somebody pulls ahead and you come back to them in the race. Just stay on the path of improvement and you're going to get to your intended destination. Yeah. Good word. All right, everybody, you're doing great. Keep it up. Keep up all the great running, all the, the, the communication with us. Keep participating in that trivia contest and just let us know uh, let us know what you're doing what you're thinking and how we can help and may God bless every step of every run go out there and shine your light good job Dean for more information about the run for God ministry go to runforgod.com if you have questions about your salvation click on the peace with God tab there's nothing more important Thanks for joining us today.